What is good y'all? It is Anime K here and we are back with another video and today we're going to be talking about the Swordsmith Village arc and look this arc I can't lie to you guys it was not the best arc out of the Demon Slayer season. Season 1 and 2 were definitely better right but today I'm going to talk about the stuff I liked about it, the stuff I was a bit unsure about and the stuff I really just did not like but we're going to start on a positive here we're going to talk about the stuff I like. So first I liked learning how the swords were made now look this wasn't a really interesting part for a lot of people, a lot of people did find this boring, well not a lot alright I, I saw like a couple of people say it was boring but for me personally I liked I liked it. I like learning how the swords are made. You know what? I'm a type of anime watcher. I don't mind long talking scenes when it's actually interesting and it gives you more information about maybe the place is set or different type of stuff that's made there. I don't mind that. Me personally, I don't mind all that. But a lot of people did. Well, sorry, I keep saying a lot of people. Some people did find that a bit boring. But for me personally, it was fine. Now we've got Genya's backstory. Now, if you remember Genya's backstory, right? His brother is one of the Hashiras. Now, for some reason, his name has slipped out my mind. But you know who his brother is, right? And you know what? A lot of Demon Slayer backstories, they are not really the best. They are not well written. But this, I did like it. I think his backstory is very interesting. You know, I think it was very sad. I kind of got a bit emotional because it was like out of all the demon slayer backstories it was the very few that actually really touched me because i felt sorry for him you know he had to protect all his siblings all his family died you know and it was his mom that basically killed the rest of them which made it even more sad and also the fact that his relationship with his brother deteriorated why that got to me is because look we've all been little kids right and we've all said stuff to like people that are older than us that have maybe been hurtful but the thing is yeah we just didn't understand and as we got older we realized that actually whatever they were trying to do for us they were doing it to help us or protect us or we just didn't understand because we were younger so that part kind of got me as well because i did i did feel sorry for him because he was trying to make amends to his brother and he was trying to show his brother that he's actually strong and he can compete with his brother and he really just wanted his brother to forgive him and I think he just wanted a really good relationship with his brother again. But that backstory, Genya's backstory, actually really got to me. I actually liked his backstory. The next backstory we've got is Mitsuri's backstory. Now, this one was fairly quick. It was fairly short. It wasn't nothing too bad. I don't think her family was even necessarily killed by demons. She just wanted to fight because she wanted to find a place to fit in. And that's fine as well. And the reason why I liked her backstory, because it was different from the usual Demon Slayer backstories, where it's just demon attacks family, family dies, gets angry wants to be a demon so no you know she struggled because she used to eat a lot she struggled because she was stronger than what most girls are and i think obviously i won't know personally because i'm not a girl but i think this is a problem that maybe a lot of girls go through that maybe act a bit tomboyish so i kind of feel it for it there but i'm sorry mitsuri i don't know how the rest of them guys did not want to marry her because i don't care right if a girl looks like mitsuri i do not care how strong she is i am marrying her doesn't necessarily mean she's the man of the relationship doesn't necessarily mean that i'd still marry you though we're gonna get back into mystery later on into this video but that's the stuff i liked about demon slayer now as you see the list is very short on stuff i liked from this arc now i'm gonna get into the stuff i wasn't sure about so first it's the fights now look the reason why i've got fights in the middle type of section is because i liked it and i disliked it right i think these fights were good but but compared to season one and season two i just don't think that the fights are really up to bar because look don't get me wrong right i know it costs a lot of money for these animations to be made and these fights to be choreographed i get that right but if you're going to set a standard with the anime right you can't then drop it because a lot of fans like me are going to get annoyed or a bit discouraged because basically right look, the fights were good but i feel like in these fights it was more talking and more dialogue than anything else and look i said before previously i don't mind the talking but when it comes to the fights i just want to see a fight obviously i know in anime right they're going to talk during the fight that's fine but i feel like it was 80 percent talking and 20 percent fighting and these fights like i said before they just weren't really up to par with what we've normally seen with demon slayer especially season two and look i'm not one of them fans where it has to be flashy fighting i feel like villain saga is a perfect example and i know you probably think and i always go on about villain saga but villain saga is a perfect example of a fight that just flows well doesn't need over the top animations but just flows perfectly but i feel like this season the fights were kind of boring but i didn't find them too boring to the point where i'd say i disliked them but i just don't think the fights this season were really that interesting to be honest especially mutual's fight because he gets stuck in a bubble for like 
two episodes. I know a lot of people agree with me on this. It was so boring watching this guy be in the bubble. Don't get me wrong, was it completely bad? No, but it wasn't one of the better fights that we've seen within Demis. Moving on, we're gonna get into the stuff that I disliked. So first off, sticking with Mutro, right? Or M Mutro, or I'll call him the Mist Hasher, right? I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but his backstory, again, I was talking about Misery's backstory and I was talking about Genya's backstory and I was saying they were very interesting. Now, we've got the other end of the spectrum. We've got the Mist Hashra's backstory and his backstory, to be honest, it just wasn't that interesting. It was just a bit boring. I'm sorry, that's all I can really say about it. You guys in the comments tell me if you agree or disagree with me on this, but I just didn't find it interesting. I was watching it and I was like, I didn't feel no emotional attachment. And it wasn't because I didn't know his character because Genya had barely shown up in the anime. You know, the last time we seen him, if I'm not mistaken, was season one. And Mitsuri, we only saw her like once or twice in season one as well, but their backstories hit me in the chest. His, I was yawning and I was like, mm. that's that's literally my reaction to it because his backstory was just boring. Now, another thing as well, Tanjiro was suddenly able to use Zenetsu's ability. Now, this was a bit weird for me because I don't know if it's ever been explained that Tanjiro can use other people's abilities. I know he can use water style to an extent and he can use flame breathing and that, but it was a bit weird that he was suddenly able to use Zenetsu's lighting ability just by having one flashback and then thinking about it i mean there wasn't even no time where they showed him even training they didn't even hint at him training with zenetsu's ability so i don't know what was going on there maybe it's just a thing that all demon slayers can do if they pump so much into one part of their body they can do that but then again though they didn't explain that either so they didn't explain why he was able to do it but it just seemed to me like the best possible thing they could do to help tanjiro catch that demon it seemed more of a plot armor but personally for me i didn't really care because i don't really like zanetsu anyway so it didn't really bother me that much but i just thought i'd point that out for you guys and overall right as as a season it felt more like a prologue for season four and i have this written down actually and i was thinking on this this should have been made a movie to be honest right maybe some of you were thinking how would they make this a movie but to be honest the way it was structured and how long it took for some of these scenes to be made i would have just made this a two hour movie i literally would have done that or maybe an hour and 50 minutes because this arc seemed more like it was fit more for a movie than it was for an 11 episode series and i'll be honest i would have rated this a 4 out of 10 but what pushed this arc to a 5 out of 10 for me was look it was that last moment where we think Nezuko is going to die. And I don't know why I thought Nezuko was going to die because there's just no way they would kill off Nezuko because it would kind of hinder a big part of the story. You'd be getting rid of a big part of the story. But still, I was still thinking, damn, are they really going to kill off Nezuko? I thought they might do it, but obviously she survived and we find out that she's basically the first demon that can live in the sun and you know Muzan basically got a hard on on that he basically he was like oh my I've hit the jackpot I'm going to go devour this girl now and not in the way you're thinking as well but that was why I decided to put it up to a 5 out of 10 because that last moment where Nezuko's all right look I don't care if you think I can't put it to a 5 out of 10 because of that I love Nezuko's character and I was so happy she survived and you know what Demon Slayer you got me there my heart dropped for a second there you got me but I was kind of really disappointed with this arc, to be honest. So hopefully season four can be a lot better. Also, before I go, so I want to say Mitsuri's fight. His was the only fight where I would say it was like top, top class. Like it was like really, really good because her sword is so cool and her abilities are so cool as well. So Mitsuri is the only fight out of every single fight during this arc where I would say it was a nine, eight, nine out of 10 in terms of the fights, but the rest of them didn't really live up to the Demon Slayer standard. But look, you guys, tell me what you thought about this arc. Tell me if I missed out some stuff because I know I was talking in the Discord with some people. I know there's more stuff that Demon Slayer did wrong with this arc that I've probably missed out in this video. But look, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Give me your thoughts on the source of Felix. Uh, give me, oh my God. Give me your thoughts on the Swordsmith Village arc and tell me, did you like it or did you dislike it? And give me your rating out of 10. And this has been Anime K and peace. I am out.